it's Corey with the Art Archaeologist channel and uh, recently I watched a video by Nina Ribena and she's got this technique for doing botanical cards and so these are inspired by her video I've had a lot of card um, stuff sitting aside. I've got these all packaged so they're a little sheeny. I apologize. I will pull them up so you can see them better in a minute. But uh, I've got a lot of craft fairs coming up so I've been wanting to make these for a long time and I collected all these botanicals over the summer and I've just now been getting to them. So let me bring you in a little. One of these days I'm going to get that the first time. <laughs> these are just little sprigs of sage and I did these very very clean and there's a four of these. I'm not sure how I'm going to price them yet. I've got to figure that out. So I didn't do any inking to these or anything. I just put some gray paper in the back and all of the edges on these up to the edge of the card are torn. I love torn edges. But I also love torn edges and straight edges together. Get those out of the way. Okay, these are, these cards are so cool. Okay, the last ones I showed you, I get all my cards at Hobby Lobby. And the last ones are five and a half by four and a quarter. Um, and this is what it looks like, and $3.99, but I wait for these to go half off, so I get them for two. Like I always say. Now these cards are made from these envelopes. And same thing, Hobby Lobby. These are 8.875 inches by 3.875 inches. So I'd say roughly 9 by 4, okay? And the thing about these, you can get cards and envelopes in most all the sizes they carry except these. I have not seen any cards to fit these, so what I did was I just took some cardstock and folded it in half and then creased it with my bone folder for my card. Very simple, very simple. Okay, so there's all that. Now I'll give you a quick peek at these and hopefully you'll be able to see them pretty well. There's that one. This is some kind of a sprig. I really don't know what these herbs are. And then I backed it with um, some cheesecloth and some scrapbook paper. This is my favorite. This one came out so pretty. I love this flower stem. That one, that one, boy that sheen on the baggie, oh I, I wanted to go over the baggies with you too. I get mine, these are 4 by 12 bags and I get mine on eBay. I get a lot of my stuff when I shop online, I shop at eBay. Here's another sage sprig. And the only downside is they don't have the self-sealing flap on them. Like so I just took a piece of tape and went ahead and put it across the back. And you get quite a bit, bit of length for these cards. And I think it looks nice enough to sell as a handmade gift. I might tie some um, twine around it with a little bow. I think that might really spruce it up, but you can only spend so much time if you're trying to make money, you know. So here's one of the bags. Very simple, simple deal there. Okay, so what I've done is I've set up a couple, gotten a couple ready. I wanted to talk about the paper. This is watercolor paper here, the white, and then scrapbook paper, of course, which I inked the edges of that piece. I need to do this one. And then this, um, it's really thick watercolor paper, and it's got a really thick texture, and Nina talks about how she loves that. I like it. I love the texture. I would just like to have a lighter weight option. So... Once I come across a textured lighter weight option, I will let you know. Now, the watercolor paper, 
here's my West cut. I love this thing. I swear by this. It's a, a deckled edge ruler and you get a small and a large and I got it on eBay. I've talked about it before and I, I did not pay more than $15 for it, which $15 you might think is kind of high for a ruler, but here's how nice this is. You get this beautiful torn edge with it, which I just think is fantastic. So, I do it a little bit different than Nina, and I'll show you what I mean. Here's the other thing I use. I just got this deli paper on eBay, and I paid more than I wanted to for this, I'll tell you. It was like, I don't know, nine or ten dollars, and I think I should be able to get one of these for three bucks. I just haven't found any, and I really haven't looked, so... I'm in the States. I'm not sure what stores carry it. Okay, so let's start with this one. First thing I'm going to do is that deli paper is used for covering the botanicals, by the way, for sealing them in. I guess it helps to say that, doesn't it? So I've got this pretty piece of scrapbook. I guess maybe I did do it. I want to do it a little bit more intense. I really like to get the edge is super dark and this is how I do it. So I'm in my new area today filming hoping hoping that my lighting and everything is nice. Trying to up my game and I'm a little older. I'm not too old but I'm not you know, 12 raised on technology, so <laughs> I kind of muddle along with some of this stuff. I'm sure there's those of you out there who can relate. So you definitely want to make sure you've got your card the, the way you need it. And then what I do is I just take my tape gun here and I run it along the edges. Hobby Lobby. These tape guns are everywhere. And then you can get a refill cartridge for it. Okay, so I just go around the edge. And then I take my Yoohoo. This is another Robin McClendon treasure. That's Robin McClendon has a channel. And I love her stuff and I've learned a lot from her. And I don't know if she's still on. But I haven't seen anything new, but that I haven't looked. And then just place your card the way you want it. Oh, I'm going to turn you on to another cool tool that I've talked about previous. I swear by this. I use this for everything. Now you can use a regular palette knife from the paint department for like you know 97 cents or you can get this little baby you get two of these I got them at Hobby Lobby in the cake decorating section and they're fondant spreaders but the reason I love the and they're only a couple bucks super cheap they're very comparable to a regular palette but you've got this short edge You've got a curved edge, which I haven't found a use for yet. And then you've got this straight edge. And one side is very blunt. This side, however, is beveled. And it is perfect for this. I just love it beveled. And a lot of the palette knives, because I used to paint houses and I've used a lot of palette knives, most of them have an edge that goes brute brute and you get a 45 degree angle but it's not smooth and beveled like this. It's blunt. So these are really really helpful. Okay, so now I've got my little setup. This is just a piece of wax paper on top of a piece of poster board. And this is actually a vinyl tile I bought at Home Depot. I just really loved the look of tile and stone. So that's what that is, and that's where I got it. So I do this a little differently. Nina 
brushes her botanicals with a paintbrush and I'm far too chicken for that so here's what I do oh there's that okay so I'm gonna flip this like that because there's the stamen in there so the, here's what I do I have and I really ought to have my tweezers for this grab them real quick I'll be right back okay grabbed them this is my Mod Podge mat and I got these I got a few I think you get like three for a few bucks um, in the same pack at Hobby Lobby and I just filled this with Mod Podge mat it's my go-to and then I just put a few drops here and there on the botanical very very carefully because once I push it into the card it's gonna spread out so there are a couple different ways of doing this then I'm gonna take my piece of watercolor paper and get that where I want it and gently just push down just like that I always have paper towel handy always always with everything I do because most of what I do is messy and if it's not I find it a way to make it messy <laughs> usually so okay there you go there's that part and then I've got these two petals together. I kind of want to keep them together. Even a drop of glue is so much weight on a little botanical. Oh, that's perfect. So they're not completely tamped down, which if you use a paintbrush, you're going to have better ad adhesion in that regard because you'll have an even coat underneath. I'm just trying to get a whole lot done in a hurry. So I'm, I went ahead and threw some glue under the stem and I'm just going to lightly tap that. Okay, so... You get the idea that's how that part works and then I'm going to take a piece of your deli paper and for some reason all the deli paper in my pack is wrinkled which is fine now you do need a paintbrush so I've got a nice flat paintbrush that's devoted to gluing and gluing only and then in my little mason jar here, I have some watered down Mod Podge mat. And you want to fit, make sure that you glue a big enough area to fit the entire card on. So I'm really just going to, I'm a painter, so I'm so used to, I mean, like big job painter, I'm used to pouring and then cleaning up, but that's a little overkill for this. You do, however, want a nice, thick, juicy layer because you want the entire card sealed. And, you know, I want these to last for years and years. I want this person, whoever buys that, to look at it. 10 years from now and see purple petals. In my bookmark video, my autumn leaf bookmark video, I have bookmarks that I've made over 10 years ago that still have all the original color. They do fade a little, but you can really make a lasting treasure. So then you're just going to take your card and put it face down and Nina does it exactly this way. I learned this from her. And you want to just gently go over the whole card. And then go ahead and flip it over. She folds hers over and uses this to rub the other side. I don't because I want to keep this for another card. I'm just really frugal 
and I'm not saying Nina's not. <laughs> Everybody just has their own way of making things work, you know? Oh, Nina, if you're watching this, thank you. I love your channel. I get all kinds of amazing inspiration from you, and thank you for taking the time to share it. Okay, so there you go. Now that that's all tamped down like that, and it will stick to your wax paper underneath, this is why she does this. So she doesn't have a hot mess like that, right? Okay, so now it's all tamped down, and you just want to set this aside for even 10 minutes to dry, and then we'll go ahead and assemble the rest of the card. Here's a great quick tip. I'm going to go ahead and do this, this next card right here off camera. But I wanted to show you when you're doing these in mass production like I am, keep your paper towel handy and then you're going to have your outline of glue on this piece of wax paper. And just wipe it off and within 30 seconds it's completely unmarred and you can put your next project on there without any problems or blemishes. And the same thing holds true with poster board. I'll use the shiny side when I'm gluing, so you've got a couple options. Okay, it's probably only been 10 minutes and these are ready to work. So another quick tip, you know me and my cookie trays if you watch more of my videos. Um, I love to use these things for everything and I use them mostly for coffee staining paper and dyeing paper. So I really don't want glue on these because I put them in the oven. So I just put a piece of wax paper down and this is how I dry mine. I just make a bunch and kind of toss them on here willy nilly like that and it ends up being fine for me. So these cards here have They've got the straight edge with the watercolor paper and then the torn edge with the scrapbook paper. And you can just cut this deli paper on the straight edge. Now these on the other hand have a torn edge and your papers will always bow because of the glue which is really why I want to find, I might just use cardstock but there's no texture on cardstock. Well you can get some with that burlapy kind of texture I guess. Anyway, onward. So I just flip it over and I just kind of run it, my, make sure that my thumb is pushing down on the paper. And I just run it along the same tear and it ends up working pretty darn good. Might have to come in and get a couple little pieces here and there, but overall it works well. So I'll just do this one. Which it's nice to have the freedom to have torn edge, straight edge, whatever you want, you can do. Alrighty. Look at how pretty that looks. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, ink these. And again, I'll just do the one. I try to save all my stuff. I don't know what I could do with those tiny wax paper scraps there. Here's where it becomes important if you're going to ink. If you're not going to ink, it looks kind of neat to leave these little jagged pieces out. But I like it a little tighter with the ink. And then I really love to hit that edge. And I'm using Distress Ink Tim Holtz Vintage Photo. My little applicator tool. Now sometimes I'll get a jagged edge like that and I'll just come in and smooth it out. Here's a good example right here. Just smooth it out and then I'm gonna, this deli paper you can rub a lot of it off. Okay, I have noticed I was fiddling with the big ones to get them all in the envelopes and 
you know, push down with glue, and I didn't have a lot of problems with this ink coming off entirely. So my hands were not a total mess or anything. So it's going to hold up for you. That's how it looks all inked. I love both. I love this really clean, clean look with no ink. But I also love the ink. So there's that. And then I had I have this green speckled scrapbook paper. And I'm going to use that for the other one. And then I got that all ready to go. And then what I do is I want to make sure I'm on a very clean surface. And then I just do the same exact thing that I did with the other piece of paper. I just take my tape roller and I do the edges and I don't care if the edges on these stick up a little bit I think it adds to it plus I am only gonna work so hard <laughs> right when you're making some money you've got to really get these moving along and I love messy I think I love that organic, messy style. So very important, make sure your card's right. This one's easy because I've got postcard right here and I wanted it right side up. But I have done it wrong. So, fair warning. <laughs> and then you just want to tamp it down. And I will use my fondant spreader. But... I won't go over any of the botanicals directly with it. I just really want to get a good seal going, just like so. And then you end up with this gorgeous little treasure. I also have bags to fit these, but they're actually, clearly I do, you saw it. Um, they're a little too big for these mini cards, but it's okay with me that the bag is oversized until I find some more that fit it, and I'm sure they're out there. These do have the flap over with the adhesive strip, and they look really nice. And then I'm going to be putting stickers on these. I need to order some stickers to put on them with my information, so... They come out being really a pretty gift for somebody and they can even frame this and you know mat it up it's already got three layers but you can put that in a little frame and have the most beautiful little botanical art so thank you for joining me today and i'd love to hear your comments and i'd really love to see what you're doing if i'm inspiring you to create stuff please share with me what you're up to and please join me for the next video. I will see you soon. Thanks. Have a great day.